Hello, and uh, welcome back to day two of BrainChip's um, All Things AI CES uh, live podcast. We have with us here uh, the Chief Product Officer of Miami Technologies, uh, Sanyogita Shamsundar. Welcome, Sanyogita. Thank you. You said it perfectly. My name, not many people get it right with the right accent there. Yeah, a lot <laughs> of history. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I'm glad we started on the right foot. Yeah. Uh, can you give our uh, listeners a little bit about what Miami does and, uh, um, in fact, what you see at CES that excites you about Miami's prospects? There? That Yeah, yeah. Miami um, is a software uh, IP algorithm development uh, company uh, focused a lot on audio and speech uh, AI-based, originally signal processing-based uh, algorithms, but expanding now into AI-based algorithms to address a whole bunch of different uh, scenarios, whether it be noise suppression, speaker ID, in all kinds of challenging environments, uh, and from processing and capture to all the way to playback with uh, spatial audio and, and so on. So the, we have the whole range of uh, software and IP um, running on edge, mostly, but uh, of course, there are some applications which can't run on edge. So we have some cloud um, solutions as well. But primarily, the 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 strength of the team is being able to uh, optimize the heck out of all some of these algorithms for uh, for very different uh, edge based. You know, you know, voice and and audio is still such an important uh, component. Um, we have seen a lot on video, uh, you know, video analytics and image uh, analytics. But audio adds such a so much more context um, that I think it's it's important we we can't ignore that anymore. I think that's well put, and in fact, you're probably underselling the fact that uh, um, audio voice is fundamental to uh, uh, human machine interfaces right. of any kind. In fact, things that don't have screens or cameras can still be connected with voice, which seems to be the very almost basic. Uh, level of interaction with the device. Right, that's right. Speaker biometric, right? I mean, you can, you know, we have we have the technology uh, commercial in 40 million plus devices where you you use the speaker biometric, not the fingerprint sensor or the face ID to to you know to authenticate uh, the, the the user. And to be able to do that uh, reliably, you need to have a good positive, you know, you know, to have a very low false alarm rate. Um, so performance is and becomes extremely important for security type of applications. Fair. And and so effectively, if you're talking about the five senses, right, mm -hmm. um, and we're beginning to get more intelligent with the human That's device right. interaction, uh, voice seems to be almost primary. That's right. What other types of applications do you see for um, audio or voice AI technology, like what yeah. Miami does? Yeah, so, um, you know, um, for example, quick service restaurant uh, ordering. Mm -hmm. We are, you're driving into, and then you need to quickly order, um, you know, getting, uh, getting uh, you know, workforce is, is, is challenging. There's a lot of turnover. So, uh, you know, training is hard. So you can have AI agents, uh, voice-based AI agents that understand uh, your, what you're ordering. Um, be able to understand, again, the nuances, right? Mm -hmm. How you say it and what you say, um, like, uh, how are you versus how are you, mm -hmm. right? And intonation and, intonation and uh, things like that become become important in many, many cases, right? Uh, to be able to understand um, the emotions uh, of a customer, whether the person is angry or, or happy, text removes all of that. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you see the, I, mean, I see these large language models and you know, all, all uh, trained on text, I'm like, Okay, there's a whole lot that they have not been trained on, which is you know the context of the, or the emotions and things like that from sound, voice. Yeah, maybe there's a way to convert angry statements into all caps. Yeah, like you do an email. that's right. Yeah, <laughs> I think that that's probably the one way to do to 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 do it right and put a lot of emojis uh, and try, you know recognize emojis. Um, I think this brings us to one of the statements I was going to make. You talked about emotion with voice. Right, and you've come seen uh, the demos at BrainChip, <laughs> with, where you're using vision to kind of Correct. understand emotion as well. Uh, I was going to segue a little bit, probably a bit self-servingly, on, on uh, the fact that edge means that you have to be a lot more compact on device in terms of what it consumes. How at the same Absolutely. time when it compute. Yeah. Um, and so, 
in fact, what you guys are doing is almost like very complementary and uh, um, uh, strengthens alongside hardware that understands and is more efficient as well. That's right. So it's never going to be just one or the other. It's going to be a software hardware problem that we need to solve and actually an overall solution problem because you are going to touch cloud at some point. Uh, how do you minimize that and what is done effectively elsewhere? So having seen what uh, BrainChip has done uh, and what Miami uh, Miami has seen uh, in, in the context, how do you see this all fitting in? Yeah, I think people uh, underestimate, um, people who don't deal with hardware underestimate uh, the, the power consumption um, and the, uh, you know, uh, compute, a battery life of especially consumer devices, uh, right? Or even other devices that, you know, that that take in power. I mean, uh, you know, power consumption is always important. ESG is important. You want you want low power as much as possible, wherever possible. But especially in a consumer device that, re that requires charging, you don't want to be charging every couple of days. Um, so, um, so in that context, you want to minimize the power. You want to do some things that are efficient uh, locally. Uh, it's not a PC that can connect uh, to to a to to the cloud and run everything in the cloud and and reconnect back. So latency doesn't um, in, latency in many of these applications is also very tight. So considering all of that, uh, and then also this cost, bomb cost is important in in such type of devices. Power consumption, bomb cost, uh, latency um, uh, are if you look at all of that those things together, something like a brain chip is 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 a is a is a almost a requirement in terms of edge type of uh, applications, right? Uh, we talk about edge, and we have been looking at edge for many years now. There is a far far edge, there is a far near edge, there is a near far edge, and there is a near edge edge, and uh, so. I think there is a continuum of processing um, that is needed and different applications will have that different architecture that spans across all of these. Of course, you need cloud for some of the applications, but a lot of the stuff can be done um, done on the on the device. Um, and uh, we we want our AirPods or head, you know, Bluetooth headsets to to last a couple of days without battery charging. I would love if my phone lasted two two days, but it doesn't. Uh, every time there's a promise of a bigger battery, it doesn't. <laughs> it seems like there's more more that you add to the phone that makes it. So anyway, uh, uh, yeah. Long story short, I I do think that there is uh, definitely a need for uh, compute on the edge edge edge. Thank you. Yeah, I think. Uh... Overall, uh, we we do believe that this is going to be an important piece going forward. Um, traditional uh, CPU GPUs have done well at AI, yeah. But we are getting to that point. You need differentiated uh, uh, solutions, which are versatile still, to run different types of AI algorithms, etc., to make this possible to do in form factors that you couldn't do before, yeah. or capabilities that you couldn't get at the edge. Right. And I think we're both working on that. Correct. So um, I think to wrap this up, do you have any uh, uh, thoughts on how 2024 is going to look or any um, predictions? Yeah, 2024 certainly um, is, um, I think I'm like actually coming, before coming to CS, I'm like, oh my God, we're actually traveling now for a big conference. But it has been very energizing to see uh, so much stuff going on. And, and I really um, hope that we are able to make a difference in many of these um, areas, like move forward. Um, and uh, especially for, I think, uh, uh, the innovation uh, part of the, of, the, of the industry, whether it be startups or early stage companies, I hope it's a good year. Um, you know, everything looking up, a uh, lot, lot more opportunities, um, I think. And of course, uh, uh, you'll start seeing, I think, the first wave of uh, AI, chat GPT, Llama, or whatever you want to, uh, whichever camp you are in, doesn't matter. Those are large language models, but mm -hmm. I think we'll start seeing that we can do a lot with something more uh, appropriate for the different applications that... Uh, um, it's always like that, right? Like exactly. the, you pick the, you, we, we built micro... Uh, we we, we built uh, IBM mainframes, then came PCs and and so on. So I think yeah. that cycle cycle took a long time, but I think now people understand the importance and the need for this thing. So I think we'll converge uh, much faster. I hope. I think that's uh, we we I I believe that's the uh, that's inev inevitable. Yeah. yeah. Right. We we have to right size it, uh, and I think we're headed that way. So 
Um, so you'll get that. Thank you so much for your time and all the best with uh, 2024. Thank you. Same to you. Bye.